So you've probably heard about energy clearing, Reiki, energy healing, and maybe there's been some talk about how do I protect my energy or energy protection? I'm going to share a little bit about that in this episode as we continue on this energy theme for a couple episodes as we are in this holiday season and hopefully give you some insights on how to protect your energy and how to keep it clear. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Soul Alignment Mentor Podcast. I'm your host, Angie, and I'm inviting you to explore the depths of self-sabotage, limiting mindsets, and the beliefs that hinder our progress in life. Through intuitive messages I receive from my spirit team, I share profound insights to help you live authentically and break free from these limitations. Join me now as we uncover all the keys to living your best life. Welcome back. My name's Angie and I'm your soul alignment mentor, bringing you messages from the spirit to help you live your most aligned, authentic life. So today I want to talk about energy. And in the last episode, if you listened, I did talk about how to clear your energy using the elements, the four elements of air, water, fire, and earth. And um, based on your zodiac sign and working with the alignment of your own creation in some sense, because each of us, whether we realize this or not, we pick a particular time to become a human. As a spirit, we kind of ha- evaluate what is it in this lifetime that I want to learn? And then we choose to come to earth and be birds at a certain time based on the way the stars are aligned, the way um, the planets are aligned, and really our role that we're playing in the universe at that time based on the energetics of alignment in the universe. And so there's a lot of like detail in the energy of our life and the reason we're here and the lessons we're here to learn. And so What's interesting is we can spend our lifetime actually trying to fight against what we might be here to learn instead of leaning into it and allowing it to teach us what we really are meant to be doing on this earth. And so when we start to feel out of alignment or we feel ourselves feeling drained or tired or not our best self, it's a good time to take a look at our life to see what areas am I compromising in my energy? What areas am I not living in alignment? And living in alignment means that you live a life of fulfillment. That means that you take inspired action in doing things that bring you joy. And we really are not taught to do that, particularly in the Western culture, We are so fast paced and we are such a masculine energy that we tend to try to control and predict and force instead of working with our feminine energy, which is more free flowing and um, intuitive and trusting. And so this comes back into the energy of faith and understanding that just like I was talking about with us being that spirit being that chose to come to earth at this particular time to play this particular role, we have to remember that we are an actual frequency of the earth coming to play a part in the expansion of love. And I get asked this question quite a bit, like, what is the purpose of life? What is the purpose of our human life? And the purpose is love, is to expand the love and to understand love and how to comprehend love on a whole nother dimension than what we are in our original form. Our original form is love. And when we come to earth, we start to face all these other emotions and feelings that are not loving or love, and we start to feel out of alignment. And so by protecting our energy and understanding when we're not in that energy of love, we can start to evaluate areas where we need to kind of pull back a little bit or move forward or whatever it might be. We all have our individual way of working and growing and doing this in our life because we're not all the same. 
it always amazes me uh, how like magnificent the universe is and it's, it's expansion. There is not, if we were to tune, like take a microscope or um, like one of those science like things that you can look into, like the little molecules of each uh, thing that we can like put underneath it. Um, we would see that every single thing has its own frequency and that even the same particles, like if, if I'm thinking about, like, I follow this, um, page on Instagram, which I love to see all these different, uh, views of these items that this person does, but it, but this person cuts off a piece of whatever it may be. The last one I watched was of a sweet potato. And so she, this person cut off a sliver of a sweet potato and put it under this microscope and tuned in and, and you could see these living cells within it. And it was vibrant and it was bright and it was moving and it was, it was alive. And we don't think about those things as far as like even the particles of energy around us. Like if we if we could actually see energy, we would see light around us. We would see colors around us. We would be able to see like, well, in some ways, if we could hear it, we could hear the music of it. And so um, each little particle of energy is a different frequency that is coming together to create this beautiful musical note in some sense that continues to create more and more of itself. It's like a continuous song that we are living in. And if we're not aware of the frequency that we are in or the tune that we're in, we could start working against the song. It's almost like when you go to the middle school um, or even an adult one, honestly, that I would be this person if I were in a band. But you have that one person that's off and it kind of makes like if you hear one person off in the band or playing musical notes, like that is what's going to stand out. Like, and it's really amazing how one little particular note can cause the song and the frequency to feel different and to sound different. But when it's all cohesive and moving and flowing together, then it's just like this easy, it just, it feels easy. It sounds easy. It is a uh, soothing in some ways. And so this is how our life is. When we get out of alignment, when our frequency isn't aligned with love, we start to have that musical note that feels off in our lives. And so we have to take a step back and evaluate, where am I off? Where am I not working in energy of love? Where am I not flowing and balancing out both my masculine and feminine energy so that I can, you know, participate in this human experience more easily? And when we know that we are out of alignment, we can work to get back into alignment. And even, you know, the word work is something I don't like to use regarding this just because it is a very masculine um, way of doing things. But when I say work, I mean just adjusting. Like it's simply like going back to the music note if this person practices playing the right note over and over, it will become natural for them to play that note. It won't feel hard. And and what's interesting, I don't know And if you want to leave a comment for me and let me know if you understand this, this would be a great discussion to have um, with other people to see what they, they sense and feel with this. But when I'm doing something, I'm kind of a perfectionist. I won't lie. Like sometimes I will hold myself back if I don't think I'm going to do something correctly or when I'm not doing something correctly, I get frustrated with myself and either I have to just like cave and give in and be like, I can't do this. Or I continue to practice over and over and over until I get it right. And I'm thinking in particular about my current obsession that I took on this over, over the last summer. Um, I'd always, 
I, I had a bike when I was younger in my 20s and I loved it. And I ended up getting stole out of um, the apartment complex I was living in. And I was really disappointed because I loved that bike. But I had wanted one ever since then. And I just just wouldn't like budge and purchase something and so I ended up giving in over the summer and purchasing a really nice mount- mountain bike. And I, so I started going on the trails to learn how to mountain bike. <sighs> so if you've never done this, it is actually very hard and you there's a lot of skill to it. And there, when I first went out, you know, I had this idea of like, oh, I can do this. This looks easy. You just, it's just like riding a bike. You just ride the bike. Well, then I quickly learned it's not just riding a bike. There are, um, feet placement, leg placement, body placement, the way you look at things, the way you, you know, go around things, the way you go over things. Like there's all kinds of different things because on a trail, there's not always a clear path. And this is kind of how life is. There's not always this clear path that we have to, we can walk. And so we kind of have to keep our position open to maneuvering around things that might take us off the path. And so, you know, as I have progressed in my ability to do this skill and to mountain bike, I've become a little obsessed with improving. And so the things that I first went out and was just terrified to do, like go over a rock or go over a certain route or go down a steep hill or whatever it would be that really scared me because I would either fall or I'd hurt myself, which has happened multiple times, um, I just kept studying and I kept learning and I and I practice. And over time I've been able to begin to do those things that I would wasn't able to do. And it is always really fun when I'm like, yes, I finally went over that rock or I finally went down that steep hill. And it's always really excited. And then what happens is I want to continue that and improve more. But I have to know what I'm out of alignment with and how to build that skill into what I'm doing to be able to keep progressing. If I just keep doing the same thing over and over that didn't work, then I'm really not improving. I'm just improvising. And then before I know it, I'm way off track. And then when I am in a situation where I have to use the actual skill to move forward, and to make the right path, then I'm not going to know how to do that. And so this is what it is to be in alignment with our, with our life. So that's just an example. You know, we used the music example, me and my mountain bike example. And so it's fine tuning those little areas where we're not really in our authentic self. If we're efforting, if we're trying, if we're constantly beating our head up against a wall or feeling tired because something, it doesn't seem to be working or it doesn't feel good to do it. Instead of continuing to push through and try to force it. Like every time I say that, when I say force, (laughs) I always get a picture of a little baby with those little, um, little toys that you can stick little shapes in. And it's almost like trying to Uh, put the square in the circle shape or the triangle in the square. And so it's, that's what I envision as trying to force something in that doesn't fit into our particular alignment. So when we are doing that, we feel frustrated and we feel off. And the way to correct this is by first getting back into what I was talking with the practice First, getting to know what your alignment is. What does you, what do you feel like as your aligned energetic self? Because when you get to know how do I feel when I am in alignment, then you can know, oh, I'm trying to force this square into a circle. And you can back up and you can release that control and then see, okay, if I'm really supposed to go this direction, maybe I'm not supposed to do it this way, or maybe it's not supposed to happen the way that I think is supposed to happen. And you can release that need to force and control and pull back your energy. And this is where faith comes in. This is where you start to trust that the universe really is helping to guide you in the right direction. Because if if you're going off their path and it's starting to feel really rough, then that's the universe saying, okay, 
let's let's move into a different direction. It doesn't mean that that thing or the goal that you want to reach is not going to happen or you're not even going towards the right ending result. It just means that that path for you is not going to be the way that you think it is. And so it's not going to be that forceful energy that maybe you've been working in. It's going to be more of that flowing energy when we move back into the feminine energy, into that love energy, where it just kind of falls together and it doesn't feel hard. And then before you know it, you're, you know, going over the hard parts on that path. You're, you know, for me, it's going over the rocks or the the really big roots on the trails. And so the way we do this is by becoming still. And for my clients, the very first thing I teach them when we start working together is how to get to know their energy, how to know when their energy is blocked, how to know when their energy is clear, how to know when their energy or their intuition is telling them to shift to the left or to the right or to take a step forward or take a step back. When we get to know who we are energetically, all the things that bring us out of alignment start to be more recognizable. And then you can work to get back into that meditative state where you are flowing more easily. Now, it is also important to remember that we can't completely move from one side to the other where we're we're completely not working in any of our masculine energy and then we're not using our feminine. We have to bring this into a balance where we allow them to be a partnership and to flow together and understanding that the masculine energy has skills and positive aspects that the feminine doesn't. And the feminine has the skills and positive aspects that the masculine doesn't. And so when you bring them into a cohesive alignment, they're able to work together where you can have that that goal where you work, you put in the effort in the work, but it's in the alignment with the feminine energy instead of the forcing energy. And if you have not read my book, Leaf Lessons, um, I encourage you to go find that on Amazon or you can Google it, um, Barnes and Noble or anything like that. You can find my book, Leaf Lessons. Um, I talk about my story of growing up in working through my trauma healing and the things I've been through in my life. But in the later part of the book, I talk about a vision that I had back in, I believe, 2002, 2004 time and of a leaf. And that's what the book is about. This leaf that was trying to force its way through life, to force its way through all the blocks in this stream. And each time that this leaf got stuck, it basically wore itself out trying to get around these rocks. And from my vision, as I had this vision, I saw myself from like a universal perspective, watching this leaf struggle down this stream. I knew that if the leaf would just relax and rest and just let the water um, pick it back up and let it flow in the water, that it would be, it wouldn't be stuck anymore. But the perspective of the leaf could only see where it was. It could only see, I'm behind this rock. I have to get out of the, you know, get around this rock. So the way that I do this is my masculine energy and I beat up against a rock until I get around it. But what happens is you become more and more stuck. The more you beat up against a rock, the more you fight up against it, the more you get stuck. And so when we take this very amazing analogy that spirit gave me over 20 years ago in a vision and we put it into our daily life, we start to see those areas. Where am I trying to force things? Where do I feel exhausted? And why do I feel exhausted? What is it that I'm doing that maybe is not in alignment with who I am or what I'm supposed to be doing? Or if I'm supposed to be doing this what kind of energy am I bringing into it? Am I trusting? Am I allowing myself to be authentic to myself? Am I going about it in the energy of love? Am I, is the work that I actually am doing, the masculine energy I'm working in, is that um, being balanced out with trust? Is it allowing the universe to guide me? Am I using my intuition? And so we have to t- take a 
step back basically and see our life from our higher self's perspective to see these areas. And to do that, we have to become still. We have to take moments in our days to be quiet. We have to sit with our energy. We have to feel our energy. We have to know what it feels like to be in alignment so that when we get out of alignment, we can correct it. And I can teach a little bit more on what you then do to correct correct that energy. But the first step is always being still enough to understand how does it feel when I'm in alignment. And you might it might take you a minute to get into alignment so you can feel that energy and what it what it is like physically feels like, mentally feels like, spiritually feels like, all of the aspects of you, what does it feel like to be in alignment with your highest self? And then when you start to get out of alignment, you were like, oh wait, this I'm in this area I'm doing this or in this I am attempting to force something in my life. What am I trying to force? What am I trying to control with my ego? Where is fear coming up in my life? Why is that fear coming up and what is it connected to? And this can can continue to go deeper and deeper and deeper into this energetic field of who we are. But the first step is to learn how to be still to know what your energy is. And so if you are... Uh, interested in exploring this topic even more and actually doing the work with me, I do have a seven week course where I teach you all about this. I teach you about how to work with every chakra in your system. I teach you about how to get to know your energy, how to understand when your intuition is talking to you, when your ego is talking to you, and how to really take balance in understanding when you're out of alignment and when you're not. And it's always so fun when the clients that I work with have these aha moments of like, oh my gosh, I just realized that this happened or I'm doing this and I feel like this. And then they are able to move back into the right alignment in the right direction. And some of them will just text me or send me a message during the week um, after our session and they'll say, oh my gosh, I just realized that you know, my um, family member was acting like this. And then I started acting like this. Instead of staying in alignment, I uh, had to readjust myself because if if you are in control of you, then that allows that other person's energy to like, that's theirs. You need to let them have that energy and find their own alignment. We can't find alignment for other people. <laughs> and I think that a lot of our efforting and forcing and controlling is us trying to find someone else alignment for them so that they feel comfortable so that, and this is all codependency, you guys, so that we can make sure if people around us feel good, then we'll feel good. But that's not what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to do the opposite. We're supposed to make ourselves feel good. Then we allow other people to work on their own energy. And when we are in alignment, that gives them permission because you've separated that energetic field to then find their alignment. And then this cohesive balance comes into these relationships in your life and it just flows more easily. But you first have to come back into your energy to control yours without trying to force other things outside of yourself to be in alignment. So I do hope that this helps. Like I said, reach out if you would like to um, do that seven week journey with me. And I also do, if you are open and you want, I do also teach about um, developing your psychic abilities, your mediumship, if you do feel called to doing that. And then during that seven weeks, we can work on that as well. So um, reach out if you would like that. Also, I just want to make a little announcement for my Women Awakened group that has been meeting for the last, gosh, six or seven months, I have been getting some intuitive hits that I need to make a change with this group. And so I recently made the decision to uh, close the group down, but don't worry. There is something new in the works. I'm feeling spirit giving me some intuitive insights and ideas to move forward into the next year. And I feel like they're going to be in a more alignment with where spirit wants to guide us all. And I'm super excited about that. So be watching for that. And we will, um, 
work, we'll all work on getting back into alignment here as we move forward into 2024. So I wish you all the best day, night, evening, whatever time it is for you. I send you all the universal love. Namaste.